might never know how God calls us to be the change that we want to see in the world. You might never know the difference you can make in someone's life just by living your own story in the best possible way. My name is Sister Melissa Dwyer, and it's time to make a difference. Hello, and welcome to the Making a Difference series on Shalom World TV. In this episode, I'd like to share with you about one way that we can truly make a difference, and that is by living our vocation, living who we are called to be. When we speak about vocation, it refers to a Latin word, vocare, which means to call. Now, each one of us has a vocation. It doesn't mean that God is going to call us on our mobile phone or that God is going to send us a text message and tell us what we're supposed to do with our lives. Vocation and vocational discernment is so much more than this. And yet each one of us, our first vocation is in fact baptism. It's in baptism that we are first committed as sons and daughters of Christ. It's here that we are able to take on that initial step of faith in committing ourselves to be sons and daughters of God. Through baptism, we come into this beautiful church family where we are loved as we are and have access to the mercy and love of God in so many profound ways. So baptism is our first vocation. It's our fundamental vocation that each one of us has the opportunity to live fully as we grow in life. And yet, as we do that journey of life, we are called to different states of life or vocational pathways. Again, when I speak of vocational pathways, I don't mean a career that you're going to pursue, like being a nurse or being a teacher, but what that bigger picture is for your life what you're called to in terms of the entirety of who you are in living out your first vocation as a baptised person, which state of life you're called to pursue. In the Catholic faith, that might be as a married person where the majority of people live out their vocation. It might be as a priest. It might be as a religious brother or sister or you might be called to live the vocation to single life. Each one of these states of life or vocational pathways are richly blessed. But what's so important in looking at this idea of living your vocation is the reality that it's about the fullness of life in Christ. That's the core of any vocational journey, of any vocational discernment is to discover how we can find out where we live the fullness of life in Christ. Jesus told us in scripture that he has come that we might have life and have it to the full. So too, in terms of making a difference by living your vocation, it's about living life to the full and how you can do that. How, can you, how you can be a person of joy a person of mercy, a person of compassion by living the call that God has for you. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how do I discover which state of life or which vocation I'm called to? The short answer is, it's a long journey. There's no simple formula for working out what you're meant to do with your life and where God calls you. It takes time, it takes prayer, it takes many different factors on this journey of what we call discernment or working out how you are going to live your vocation. There's a few tips that I'd like to share with you today that have helped me along the way in living my vocation. Before I share those tips with you, I'd like to put it into context of what Jesus says 
about following him. I draw your attention to a short passage from the Gospel of Luke. The title is, The Condition of Following Christ. Jesus said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let them renounce themselves, take up their cross every day and follow me. Anyone who wants to save their life will lose it, but anyone who loses their life for my sake will save it. What benefit is it to anyone to win the whole world and forfeit or lose their very self? So Jesus reminds us here that the key to any vocation, the key to living out our baptismal call is about following him, being willing to lay down our lives for him, being willing to take up our cross each and every day. It doesn't matter who we are, we all have our crosses in life. We all have things that challenge us, challenge us, make life difficult for us, things we have to bear. And Jesus assures us that if we take up our cross and follow him, he is with us every step of that way. Every step of our journey, God is with us. I'd like us to look at some tips for discovering God's call or discovering what God's vocational state of life might be for you on your journey. The first tip or piece of advice that I can give you about discovering or discerning your vocation is something that is crucial to our life, and that is prayer. Discernment begins with prayer. Now, this discernment might be in terms of discerning our state of life, but even discernment of choices that we have to make each and every day, we are called to have prayer at the foundation of our discernment. It begins with prayer and it ends with prayer. Each decision we make, especially the big ones, being able to place that in the hands of God, being able to, in fact, sometimes get out of the way of what God wants to do in and through our lives. That can be a challenge because sometimes, I'm not sure about you, but sometimes for me, I wanna take control of my prayer. I wanna say, well, God, this is what I think you're calling me to, so I'll go my way and God, you'll come with me. But that's not how God calls us to be. God wants us to surrender ourselves to His will, to surrender our lives to His plan, and how can we discover that? First and foremost is through prayer. Sitting at the foot of the cross, asking God. I remember for myself when I was discerning how to live my faith, how to live my vocation. Every church I went into, I would ask God the same question. What do you want me to do for you? Every time I went to Mass, my favourite part of the Eucharist is actually the offertory. During that moment where we offer ourselves on the table of the Eucharist, on the altar, as the priest takes the bread and wine and transforms, transforms it into the body and blood of Christ, so too we place ourselves on the altar. We give our lives open for God to transform them. So this is why I like the offertory, because it's a chance for me concretely in my prayer to place my day on the altar, to place my life on the altar, to be able to say to Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? And that question doesn't change. Each and every day we can ask that same question of God, it doesn't matter whether we are 10 years old or whether we are 90 years old. We can still ask God, what do you want me to do for you today? So prayer is the foundation stone, not only of our discernment, but of our lives. One of my most beautiful things to see is some of the sisters I live with are, are quite elderly. And to hear sisters in their 80s or in their 90s, praying that God will help them to persevere, 
praying that God will help them to be faithful to their vocation. So hearing these sisters in their 80s and their 90s praying for perseverance encourages me on my journey in my 30s to say to God, well, I also need that grace. I also need to be able to persevere. I also need you, Lord, to help me to live my vocation. So the first tip in discernment, in discovering God's dream for your life is prayer. The second thing that can help you in discovering what God asks of you is actually having a spiritual director, having somebody who accompanies you in your prayer life. Now, a spiritual director is somebody who has done studies in this field. Not anybody can be a spiritual director. They are special people with special gifts entrusted to them in this ministry. And how a spiritual director can help you in your life of prayer, in your life of discernment, is by being like a mirror. They listen to you. They don't give you the answers. So don't go to a spiritual director thinking, oh, they're going to tell me what I need to do with my life because that's not going to happen. Only God in your heart can reveal to you what his plan is. But a spiritual director can listen to you, can reflect back to you what you're saying, can help you to look deeper into what's going on in prayer for you, can help you to discover what's being said and what's not being said, and can help you pick up the subtleties of how God speaks. So especially if you're looking at big life choices or you're looking at which vocational pathway you're called to, having a spiritual director, a companion on the journey, someone older and wiser than you can be invaluable in that space of discernment. The third thing that's important when we are trying to live our vocation is to belong to a community of faith. All of us need people around us to encourage us and support us. We need people who are able to pray with us, who are able to be friends to us, who are able to lift us up and give us that little nudge, that little encouragement that sometimes all of us need. So to belong to a community of faith of like-minded people is really important. I've been very blessed in my journey. From the time that I first entered the church until today, I've had beautiful faith communities that have nurtured me. Men and women that I could share my faith journey with in a safe space, in a space of being respected and loved and encouraged and given that kick in the right direction when I needed it too because we all need people who are able to push us in the right direction when we lose the way. So to have a community of faith, people around you who support you is invaluable, especially as you try and make those big decisions in life. The next tip for discernment that can really help is about trying new things. I'm constantly reminded of the quote that says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. This is an invitation for us to not just stay in our comfort zone, but to try new things, to get involved in different activities. Maybe in your parish, there's a different group, or maybe you read about something that you've never tried before. Take up that opportunity, take up that invitation to make a difference by stretching yourself and getting involved in something new. The last tip for discernment that I'd like to give you today is about taking a risk. It's important in discovering our vocation that we are open to stretch ourselves and take that leap of faith. If you recall the story of the first disciples, they had no idea what God was calling them to when Jesus spoke to Simon at the shore. And yet Jesus said, push away from the shore, push out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. 
In the same way, God invites us to take that risk, to take that leap of faith. One thing that I've discovered in my life and my journey with lots of people, especially in discernment, has been that sometimes we're afraid. Sometimes we're afraid to take that risk. We might discover in prayer that God's asking something of us, no matter how old we are, and yet we're afraid. It's not by chance that in Scripture, 365 times God says, do not be afraid. 365 times through different prophets, through different situations, God reminds us, fear not. I don't know if you've worked it out, but that means that that's one time for every day of the year that God reminds us in Scripture, don't be afraid. This is consoling for us who are pilgrims on the journey of faith. It's consoling because we're reminded that no matter how much of a risk we take, no matter how afraid we might be, how uncertain, unsure, that if we take that leap of faith, God is with us. God is before us, within us, behind us, surrounding us and encouraging us to trust Him, to fear not. Conscious of the reminder that we too are like Mary, reminded that with God, anything is possible. Taking a risk is so important in discovering and living your vocation. When I was discerning my vocation more than 20 years ago, I was afraid. I was unsure. I had no idea really what I was called to. Many people told me that I wouldn't be able to make it as a religious. Many people doubted that I would even last six months living this particular vocation. Even friends, not just half, half friends, but really close friends, they deserted me because they said, we don't understand you anymore wanting to pursue this vocation as a religious. If I'd listened to all those negative voices, I wouldn't be standing with you today. Deep down, when we are discerning our vocation, we have to take that risk. We have to trust God and trust that God will provide for us the grace that we need. And God's providence in, is not just once. God provides for us every single day. Just as in living our vocation, we don't make that yes or that choice only once. For example, if you're called to married life, you don't say yes to your husband or wife just on the day of your marriage vows. You say yes every day. You say yes to your spouse each and every day of the journey. So too for me as a religious or for priests in their ordained ministry, they're called to say that daily yes in living out their vocation. It's an invitation for each one of us, even when we're scared, even when we are unsure. When I first started religious life, I had no idea what it meant to be a nun. I had no idea what it meant to be a Kenoshan daughter of charity. My idea was based on the stereotype that we see in the movies of the singing nun or the flying nun or different versions that the media presents to us. And yet along the way, each day of living out my vocation, God has given the grace to be faithful. God has given the grace to keep going. God has given the grace to daily discover that this is exactly where I'm called to be. God wants to give you this gift as well. God wants to assure you that He is with you on the journey of living your baptismal vocation. God wants to give you the assurance that He goes before you in your discernment. All we are invited to do is to place our trust in God which at times can be really challenging. And yet He goes with us and He wants to speak to our hearts in prayer. He wants us to give Him time and space to reveal His will in our lives. So in terms of discernment, 
they're the five tips that I wanted to share with you today. Prayer, number one. Life begins and ends with prayer. Discernment begins and ends with prayer. Secondly, having a spiritual director, someone who can accompany you on the journey. Thirdly, belonging to a community of faith, having like-minded people around you who encourage you on your journey of faith. The next step is about having the opportunity to try new things, taking new chances, getting involved in different activities that can stretch you and widen the tent of your heart. And finally, ultimately, it's about taking a risk. It's about risking with love beyond measure, not being closed, not being afraid, but trusting, trusting that God is with us and that He calls us to go beyond what we ever thought was possible. So I want to pray for you and with you today that God will continue to speak to your hearts and that you might have the courage to live your vocation because that's one really concrete way that we can make a difference in our world. If each one of us lives our vocation to the best of our abilities, then with God, anything is possible. Thank you for joining us today on Making a Difference with Shalom World TV. I hope to see you next week as we continue to explore how God calls us to make a difference. God bless you. A lot of talk in our church today about the new evangelization. And we might ask, well, what's new about the new evangelization? One thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be Catholic, should already be Christian. Individuals, families, communities, whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel. And so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith, of evangelization. Another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that. And the new media, and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today.